Good afternoon, everyone. It's only 3.30 p.m. and I've already used 70 liters of water. I've had a shower this morning, I've flushed the toilet three times, and I've done the dishes. By the time I will go to bed tonight, I will have put 150 liters of water down the drain. And the bad news is, this 150 liters is only 5% of my total water consumption. You see, 95% of our water footprint is indirect. It is hidden in the energy we burn, the goods we buy, and the food we eat. In Australia, water is a scarce resource. So therefore, efficient water use in agriculture and industry is critical. One example of a water um, intensive industry is the brewing sector. Depending on the brewery, three to 10 liters of water go into every liter of beer produced. And for my research, I am investigating how water use in breweries can be improved. And I'm doing this for, in a, for a case study at Cooper's, which is an iconic South Australian brewery. Firstly, I've created a water balance, which is essentially an account of the water going in and out of the brewery. And you can see that water balance on my slide. From this water balance, I've been able to determine the water to beer ratio, which is about five for Coopers. Five liters of water per liter of beer puts Coopers into the good practice category, but there's still room for improvement. So how can Coopers move from good practice to best practice water management? Well, in order to answer that question, I've taken two different approaches. The first one is the reuse of clean wastewater into the brewing process. You see, some of the effluent streams from the brewing process are still clean and can therefore be reused, provided there is investment in additional pipes and storage tanks. The second approach is treating dirty wastewater up to a level where they can be reused in the brewing process again. And this is considered the holy grail of water management because it enables to bring water to beer ratios down to as low as two. For the regeneration of dirty wastewater, a wastewater treatment drain is required. And my research indicates that the optimal configuration is a coarse filter followed by a biological treatment with microorganisms and finally a membrane to remove the last remaining contaminants. Implementing these technologies will be key to produce more beer but less water. And as we live here in the driest state and the driest continent, this is something we should be aiming for if we want to make sure that not only water, but also beer, is available for future generations. Thank you for your attention.